Hey, welcome back everybody. Today, special weekend video because we have a response video for Center Hill Cards who wants us to, uh, he's having a 150 and 200 combined giveaway, wants to us to do a video response. Of course, I'll leave a link down to Center Hill Cards down in the description below. Check out his channel. Does a great job busting packs and uh, doing all sorts of things on his channel. Growing very quickly. Not as quickly as he'd like, so go give him a sub. Check him out yourself. But he wants to do a video response with five main items. First, pro game. You know how I like to ramble, so I can go on and on and on with these great questions. But uh, let's go with number one. First pro game. I was four years old. Four years old. And... As many of you know, I grew up about an hour and 20 minutes from Pittsburgh, PA. So we went to a Pirates game. And as a four-year-old, I was just amazed by the size of the stadium. Three River Stadium was huge. And as a four-year-old, it's like a monstrosity. I mean, it's it was just gargantuan. And I couldn't get over the size. And I was walking to the stadium with my two brothers and my dad. And... Just completely mesmerized by Three Rivers Stadium. That hopefully will stick. If not, we're going to tape it up there. So you can see Three Rivers Stadium. Yeah, and I'm walking to the stadium. Completely flabbergasted by the size of it. That's what she said. And uh, step right out in front of a car. And little young Meyerhead is going to die. Luckily, my oldest brother was there and yanked me out of the way. The oncoming vehicle and said for me to pay attention. So, saved from a sheer death as a young four-year-old. So, that was my first pro game. First pro player met in person. Okay. There is a 1979, of course, the We Are Family Pittsburgh Pirates. Won the World Series. Here's a team photo in 1980. In 1980, the coaching staff came down to Wheeling, West Virginia and put on a little clinic, a one-day clinic. And it was uh, manager Chuck Tanner, who's sitting right there. Uh, coach Bob Skinner, he was the hitting coach. He still signs through the mail. Uh, pitching coach Harvey Haddix was there, the kitty. And um, Joe Lynette. He was the third base coach. Al Monchak was the first base coach. So these five gentlemen right here came in for a baseball clinic. And they were uh, gods because they're just coming off the 79 World Series. They could do no wrong. They put on a great clinic for a day. And uh, so those are the first pro players I met as a 12-year-old. But let's see, this is a lot of famous people. A lot of guys who still sign through the mail on this 79 Pirates team. There's Ed Ott signs through the mail. Phil Garner, who used to sign through the mail, kind of taking a break for the last year or so. Steve Nikosha, catcher, he signs through the mail. Eddie Whitson does not sign. Tony Bartarone was a trainer. He's deceased. Um, he's deceased. Skinner's still alive and signs. Rooker signs for a $10 fee. Uh, Enrique Romo, relief pitcher. That is... Who's that? Looks like Rick Roden, but he's wearing 44. Uh, Lee Lacey signs for a $10 fee, I think. Dale Barra signs for a $10 fee. Mike Hitman Easler signs. John Milner's deceased. Tim Foley does not sign anymore. Manny Sanguin does not sign through the mail. Matt the Scat Alexander. Rennie Stennis deceased. Buck, Grant Buck Jackson is deceased. Bill Robinson's deceased. Burt B. Home Bly Levin, Hall of Famer, signs for a $20 fee. Omar the Antelope Marino does not sign, does private signings. Dave Cobra Parker signs for a $20 fee. Candelaria, $10 fee. Jim Bibby's deceased. To Colby, who somebody got a recent return from him recently. Uh, Pop Stargell's deceased. Bruce Keeson deceased. And there's Donnie Robinson. Uh, he signs through the mail. Great signer. And that's got to be Rick Roden, but I don't know why he's wearing 44. Maybe he forgot his jersey because he wore a 26. Almost certain he wore 26 as a pirate. 
scratch golfer now. He's on the pro uh, or pro am tour. So anyway, I've met those guys, and then first autograph in person. Who was that? Must have been these guys, because I know I got all five of their signatures. Oh, I went to um, prior to that in nineteen. Well, before that, I went to um, Steelers training camp. Steelers have held their training camp in Latrobe, Pennsylvania for, I don't know, years, 60 years maybe. And um, most of those guys after practice at Latrobe will sign. They'll go through the line of fans. And uh, I remember getting Rocky Blyer and um, Jerry Moon Mullins, offensive lineman Larry Brown. We got his signature and uh, center I was named Ray Mansfield. We got his signature. Uh, that was before that year that those guys came down. So that was the first autograph in person. First TTM. First TTM. Uh, back in, I don't know, let's say 1995 or 1996, I was reading the Beckett Magazine. And uh, they had a column. Not every month, but once in a while they had a column that caught my eye. They said... These players will sign through the mail. Just mail them either a photograph or a card, even an index card, and they will sign it for free. And the first person they had listed there that I saw was um, uh, Otto Graham, the great uh, Browns Hall of Famer. I thought, my gosh, if I can get his autograph. And I had um, this Enor Football Hall of Fame set that came out in 91. I knew I had an autogram card, so I just sent that off. Exactly what it told me to do. Self-addressed stamped envelope. Put a letter in there requesting his autograph, and he'll return it. And there it is. To Michael, best wishes, autogram. One of the greatest players of all time. Free of charge. We returned in about a week or two, and that was pretty darn cool. That started the passion of TTM autographs. So that was pretty cool. Number five is very interesting. Least valuable card that means the most to you. And I've got a bunch of those that fall in that category, but two of which are these um, Randy Moss cards. Randy Moss played at Marshall, and for a long time I was a Marshall season ticket holder. Um, big booster of the program. And those two uh, uniforms that he's wearing, same uniform. It's got the MAC emblem there on the left breast. He wore this in uh, 1997. 1996, Marshall was in 1AA, won the 1AA National Championship, and Randy Moss was a freshman. I just mentioned that in um, uh, yesterday's video, mail day video. But in 97, they moved up to 1A and joined the MAC, the Mid-American Conference, with you know Ohio and Bowling Green and Ball State. That's who they're playing right there, Ball State. And um, so I got to see Randy Moss played for two seasons at Marshall, 1996 and 1997. So these cards are taken in 1997 because they're in the MAC, as you see there. And, well, why is that important? I don't even know what these cards are worth. Maybe a couple bucks. But uh, so anyway, during Moss's career, I prob he played in uh, 28 games. I know that because he scored a touchdown in every game. And I think that's a record. NCAA record, 28 games and 28 touchdown scoring streak. Um, and I can go on and on about Randy Moss, but I saw probably, well, he played 15 games in 96 and then I think uh, 12 or 13 games, yeah, 13 games in 97. That's 28 games. More than half of those were at home because the 96 team played most of their playoff games at home. They hosted the national championship games. So let's just assume he had 16 or 17 home games. I saw probably, I'm certain I saw all of them, but uh, let's just underestimate and say 15. And away games, you know, I probably saw a handful of those. So maybe 21 or 22 games out of the 28 games he played in college. Just phenomenal, obviously. He's one of the best of all time in the NFL, so you can imagine what he did in college. Um, but uh, <laughs> just unguardable. And I've got several stories I could tell, but I won't go on and on forever. But I do want to show this. Hold on just a minute. I'll... 
All right, that jersey that you saw on those cards is hanging right there. Same jersey. You're seeing the front of it there, obviously. And you're seeing the back of it there, which is what a lot of his opponents saw as he raced to the end zone. But uh, we had him sign this. Signature is getting a little weak there, but you can see it really good right there. Signed it in person. That uh, came into town, my office. And first thing he did when he saw it, it said, Ooh, a gamer! Where'd you get the gamer? So he was excited to see that. Yeah, he recognized right away what it was. And I told him where I got it because before it was uh, folded up and framed, you could see that it was cut off just like that is. Uh, you, obviously, the front had the Marshall uh, emblem there at the base of the V on the neck, the little M there. The emblem wasn't on there, but they had taken it off. Uh, when they sold the jersey, they had to remove all the emblems. NCAA emblems and everything else. So it does not have the Mac emblem, but that's a gamer. <laughs> Moss confirmed that it was. He's uh, He was an amazing, amazing player in college, obviously, as you might imagine. And that was the big knock on him going into the NFL was, well, he, he did it against one double-A competition and did it against uh, competition in the Mac his second year in college. So, you know, that doesn't prove anything. He can't do it in the NFL. And <laughs> that's why he kind of slipped in the draft to, I think 21 overall, but um, anyway, he proved him wrong. He proved he could do it against uh, the best in the world. So that's beside the point. Anyway, let's go. Center Hill Cards. Again, I'll leave a link down below in the description. Go check him out. And if you have time to respond, I think the comp uh, contest ends tomorrow. So rush to get those video responses and uh, contest responses. Check him out. Let's boost him up. And go sub to him and get his subs up there. But anyway, comment down below what you think. <laughs> what do you think? Have you ever been to Three River Stadium to see either the Pirates or the Steelers play? And uh, those 79 World Champion We Are Family Pirates were very special. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you soon.